Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the DCB Bank Limited Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. Joining us on the call today are Mr. Murli M. Natrajan, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Ravi Kumar, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Ajit Kumar Singh, Chief Investor Relations Officer. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Murli M. Natrajan. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, for joining this call. Uh, we also have Sridhar Sheshadri, our Chief Risk Officer, R. Venkates, our HR Operations and IT Head, and then we have Praveen Kuti, who is our Head of Retail Banking and Agri Banking. Uh, so let me just give you a few points, and then we will open up for uh, questions. Uh, our advances growth was about 19% and deposits growth was 23%. Uh, the market conditions were tough, so the cost of funds went up, and were not easy to grow uh, CASA balances. Uh, that had some impact on our uh, MIM, and we expect this to stabilize over the next uh, two quarters. Uh, we will explain in detail a little bit more. Uh, collection efficiency continues to be uh, strong. Uh, while there were slippages in um, mortgages primarily coming from customers who have just now come out of moratorium and there are no more moratorium uh, left. Everything is uh, built as of now. Uh, our collection upgrades and uh, recoveries have started picking up. For example, if you see in page 25, last quarter was uh, 211 crores of upgrade and recoveries. This year, is, this quarter is 289 crores, which is 73% of the uh, slippages. Uh, we expect this number to continue to build, and we think that uh, we should be able to reach similar level to what we were able to do last year in about maybe two quarters or so. Uh, if I look at uh, slippages without uh, considering gold, it is at about 2.69%, which is lower than uh, last quarter uh, slippages. And we think that step by step, as um, we intensify our collections on customers, in the restructured pool, uh, we should be able to uh, contain the new slippages, essentially coming from uh, uh, mortgages. Uh, that is uh, one. Uh, in terms of loan growth, uh, in terms of dispersal, uh, again, dispersal has picked up, and we expect this number to improve in the coming uh, quarters. We started growing our headcount again. Last quarter, you, you may have seen a lower number on headcount. Uh, this quarter is an uh, uh, increase in headcount. And we are building this uh, capacity so that uh, in the coming years, we can achieve higher than 20% growth rate on a year-on-year -year basis. And our intention is to double the uh, balance sheet in three plus years. That still is how we are uh, proceeding. Um, in terms of um, uh, cost to average assets, that is declining with growth. And we expect that to keep coming down. Uh, as we continue to grow our uh, uh, portfolio. So those are some of the things that I wanted to mention. Top 20 deposit is uh, just about uh, 7%, and we continue to be very granular in our uh, loan portfolio. 85% of our loan book continues to be at uh, 3 crores of uh, three crores or below. Credit cost is uh, at 28 basis points, and uh, our capital adequacy uh, remains uh, strong to support our growth ambitions. Uh, I open up for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one.
The first question is from the line of Darbin Shah from Haitong, India. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, and th thanks for the opportunity. Um, so, you know, when you explain about the slippages being lower X gold, but if I see the, you know, NPAs uh, segment wise, you know, there has been a rise for uh, most of the segments, you know, whether it is corporate, which you mentioned, sorry, uh, whether it is for uh, mortgages or even the SME segment. Uh, and even in the other segment, excluding gold. So if you can just throw some light there as well. And second question is on other income, I'll ask that later. Yeah, so uh, mortgages, uh, all portfolio has come out of uh, moratorium. All portfolio is built. If you see our collection efficiency, including restructured, we are in pretty good uh, shape in terms of uh, restructured. What happens up in... in uh, uh, customers who have come out of moratorium is that it takes about, like I think explained last quarter also, it takes about three, four months for them to come into the rhythm of paying on a regular basis. As you know, even if they uh, miss, uh, once they miss three payments, and then even if they are making one, one payment, it remains as a NPA. And it takes time for them to kind of uh, bring back to normalcy. You will see that usually our upgrades are higher than uh, uh, recoveries. Uh, that suggests that uh, we are able to get the customer back into uh, regular paying customers through upgrades more than we do on uh, uh, recoveries. So from that point of view, I think uh, we should expect the recoveries to uh, pick up and we have demonstrated that this quarter also because it's already at 73%. Last year, we were demonstrating about anywhere from 98 to uh, 100%. And we expect that because we have adequate capacity in collections to achieve that. Uh, SME and all, even if some two account uh, slips into NPA, that might show as a, a uplift. Again, these are cases where we have full security. Customers who are missed, for example, uh, that normal 12 circular of not servicing three interest slip into it, and then they come and uh, repay and then come back to normalcy. Uh, on corporate, it's a very small uh, slippage of uh, some addition to some existing uh, NPA, so I don't think there has been any... Uh, challenge on that. So that is how the things look. Uh, gold loan, uh, it is at 42 crores. We don't worry about gold loan too much. Uh, like I said, we have full security and we have been able to demonstrate that we can reduce gold loan uh, uh, NPAs uh, at any point in time as the customer comes and settles the loan with us. Okay, and just to add, um, if you can throw a light on to when we will see that you know slippage is coming below two percent ex gold, like we were you know pre COVID or slightly prior to that as well. I think uh, I think uh, uh, we have to give ourselves another two quarters at least. I feel the reason for that is that uh, all these small customers who had uh, gone into restructured moratorium, uh, some part of them take time to come back to the rhythm of the repaying uh, their loans. So uh, we are on top of it. We have, the good news is that we used to actually have a separate team reminding customers in the moratorium. Now that they are not in the moratorium, we have kind of brought them into regular uh, collections, which is also helping because now we can be a lot more confident in asking the money to come the customer than when they were in the moratorium, for example. We had collected a lot of money while they were in the moratorium also to make sure that they don't get into uh, habit of uh, losing uh, touch with payment uh, schedules and so on. Uh, but some of them prefer to stay in. Uh, but overall, I don't see any uh, issues with the portfolio. And our recovery upgrade performance on some of these customers who have come out of one of them or restructured also indicates that, uh, uh, you know, we have a pretty uh, uh, good handle on the situation. Okay. And so my second question is related to uh, you know uh, margins. Uh, in your initial comment, you mentioned about uh, cost of deposit stabilizing over the next two quarters. So if you can throw some light there, you know how much deposits have already been repriced. Uh, what's coming next, uh, or what will be coming in next couple of quarters? How do you see that shaping up? So let me talk about margin and uh, cost of deposit. Uh, we are tracking cost of deposit on a daily basis. And we have a good understanding on how the uh, deposit pricing is uh, moving. Uh, the deposit uh, repricing of the existing term deposit and all should complete in about uh, two quarters for me. 
In another two quarters, it should get completed. But while that is happening, uh, the pin. What is happening also is that uh, you have we have different types of portfolio, right? For example, tractor and gold loan will be in the fixed category. So that will not see any improvement in uh, uh, yield except for new loans that we originate. The portfolio cannot be repriced there in some of those, like for example, CVs about 250 or 200 odd crores and some uh, um, tractor which is which can't be repriced. Then we have a portfolio where, uh, which is essentially mortgage, uh, lap and home loans, where we give a small period of fixed and then we make it variable. This helps us to kind of, uh, uh, you know, make sure that the customer retention is uh, intact, at least in the initial period. Many of those portfolios are coming up for repricing in the coming month and start to pick up even more in the next, uh, uh, next year. MCLR portfolio, which is a declining portfolio, also has a fixed schedule of every quarter passing on the uh, uh, increase. So next net, what seems to be happening is that we just have to uh, we just have to bear with the cost of one increase um, for about two quarters, and then the entire benefit of volume starts to uh, we start to gain that post say about one and a half, two quarters. We are looking at our month on uh, on basis. So that's how our indications are. And uh, we are pretty confident uh, that unless there is some major issue in market in terms of liquidity and cost of one going haywire, uh, we seem to be in that path at the moment. Okay. okay. Just related to it, how much was the uh, margin impact because of slippages during the quarter? And that will be the tip from my end then. We don't have that, but you know, some recordings happen, some slippage happens, uh, you know, so I don't think I have that uh, uh, stuff, but um, you know, I don't think it is a very material uh, number. Because okay. recovery yeah. upgrades as well. And in recovery, I'm seeing the slippages, say for example, in slippages, I sacrifice three months interest as an example, I'm just saying. But if I recover some old uh, NPA, which is six, seven months, I might actually gain interest of six, seven uh, months. So it's like a lot of plus and minus in that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, sir. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. So first of all, please. Sure. Yeah. So first, on your uh, savings rate, right? Um, at the end, at the fag end of the quarter, we had increased the SAR rate from in 10 lakhs to 2 crores bucket uh, to 8 percent, uh, versus I think slightly below 7. So a, you know, um, of course, this is um, maybe um, at the top end of the industry offering. Other banks that offer such kind of a rates, they have very high yielding microfinance portfolio or some other unsecured portfolio, whereas our blended yields are around 11.5%. Mm -hmm. You add some blended cost uh, on top of this 8% regulatory cost, etc. Then the incremental margins that would come out of this liability would be uh, much margin dilutive, I mean, uh, broad mathematics. So A, what led to uh, this uh, kind of a pricing strategy? B, uh, you know, what could be the proportion in this bucket? So because this is this has come at the fag end of the quarter, um, so ideally this sh the full impact should come in third quarter. So A, why why this change? Uh, of course, other banks are uh, also have such um, pricing, but they have a very high proportion of um, or a significant proportion of MFI and secured loan. So your thoughts there? Yeah. So first of all, bulk of our savings account balances come at the lower end of the pricing, uh, uh, you know, pricing band. Okay. To be able to, um, you know, let's say for example, we have uh, 100 RMs in the uh, front line. Not more than. 15 RMs can actually be really phasing up to high ticket HNI kind of uh, uh, customers. The rest of the guys all get ticket rise of one and a half, two lakh, 2.5 lakh, 3 lakh, like that. 
So the pricing on the savings account for more, many of these uh, customers are in the aspirational zone as opposed to actually them earning. But it is slightly better than, uh, uh, say, for example, a public sector bank and also we are able to attract customers. Besides that, we also offer some uh, cashback kind of uh, opportunities in some of the uh, products. So that also attracts customers. So even after pricing it at 8%, I don't believe that that is our uh, price that we pay in uh, overall SAW balances. That is point one. Second point I want to mention is, many times the customer retention strategy is that you have to offer slightly higher rate in savings because the customer, instead of giving it at the term deposit, wants to have the flexibility of keeping it at the, uh, uh, you know, savings account. So those are the customers that are attracted at that high ticket, uh, high uh, uh, pricing. And frankly, the customer is paying us less than the term deposit in this particular case because he will actually get the, all the band pricing, so it will probably come at less than 8%. So I would like to argue that for retention of those customers, we are actually paying less than, uh, you know, uh, term deposit rate. So that is our approach on those, uh, uh, you know, the thing. Okay. But sir, this will be a very, uh, I mean, this could be a significantly margin dilutive uh, strategy, right? Because even if this is... Jay Mundra, you compare what is the cost of an increase on a marginal basis on the last quarter, that is the quarter that has come by, for all the banks. I mean, we have done the comparison. Our cost of fund has grown up by 16 basis points, right? You can say, check that. And check with all other banks who may actually be showing different, uh, maybe lower rate in the car or something, and how their cost of funds have gone up. Then we can obviously have a discussion on that. No, no, so, so this quarter, said the, the impact would have been only for three to four days, right? Other banks have seen cost of funds increase by 30 to 40 basis points. Oh, we are much better off. Even 80 basis points. Yeah, so we are much better off, but I think the full impact will come only in third quarter, right? Not because of, uh, not because of the saving rate. Like I said, saving rate at 8% is more of a retention strategy of customers who are getting cannibalized on the term deposit because some other bank is offering that kind of flexibility to them at a savings rate. So better that we actually retain them by this, where we actually end up paying less than 8% uh, because of the, uh, you know, various rates that appear in the uh, band. Okay. And you are, are you seeing very uh, healthy inflows because of this and retention? I mean, fair to say that. So, you know, you don't want to lose some of the customers. So, and like I said, the customers who are acquired by us are all in the smaller uh, band. All the uh, branches, I mean, it's very difficult to get uh, customers at 2 crore, 3 crore, 5 crore. No, it's not easy. Uh, because there are a lot of opportunities for those customers. So, bulk of our customers come in the smaller uh, balances in SAR. Okay. That's good. Second question is, sir, on your disbursement trend and loan growth, right? So, loan growth has been very healthy at 18-19% YOI. But if I look at our disbursement in the last three quarters, that has been negative YOI. The growth has been negative YOI. What is negative YOI? The disbursement growth uh, is negative. Uh, I mean, there is a YOI decline in the disbursement amount. So the answer to that is very simple. Uh, we had a product called Fred, and uh, we have toned down that uh, product substantially uh, because uh, there is a huge amount of competition that we are facing in uh, uh, from public sector who are possibly offering far lower rate than us. So if you back off the threads out of it, uh, YOY, quarter on quarter, our growth will be quite intact on that. And that was a low yielding one, so we really don't worry about it. Part of it has got shifted to better yielding uh, short term corporate loans. Right. Okay. Um, and then, sir, on your gold loan uh, strategy as a product, right? So this has been a core, uh, I mean, this has been a key focus uh, product. Um, but if I see the portfolio is reducing in percentage terms, and uh, I think in absolute terms also, and at the same time, slippages, at least in the last few quarters, have risen, right? Maybe the net slippages would be 
uh, minuscule because you know you you would end up recovering everything but the proportion is reducing and there is a slippage as is rising so what is what wrong is happening in this uh, uh, in, in in this uh, product what is market case nothing wrong is happening in the product go down slippages are uh, uh, sometimes can also be uh, uh, seasonal sometimes it can be that some inefficiency in the branches in terms of following up on the gold can cause uh, slippages as long as we ensure that there is no fraud uh, or any uh, poor valuation kind of thing in the uh, gold uh, origination gold loan origination we really don't uh, worry from a timing point of view npa is a problem but other than that we don't worry uh, as of uh, now uh, we are focusing a lot also on gold co lending and other co lending and diverting some of our uh, branch uh, resources to getting uh, deposit because you would appreciate that uh, last quarter has been tough on uh, for the entire market on uh, uh, deposit and we have grown deposit by 23% uh, and we want to keep a healthy growth of uh, deposit so uh, what we when we do gold loan co lending uh, with different uh, entities we don't incur uh, operating costs and the margin is also very uh, healthy so uh, part of the uh, uh, you know capacity has been diverted to getting more deposits and uh, gold loan is something that uh, we will continue to push and uh, you know uh, as we improve our uh, uh, deposit momentum but said the proportion in overall loans is reducing for gold loan at least uh, you know um, from the present co lending has been doing well no so co lending gold does not come in the gold right is is that the understanding no no there is co lending gold and co lending other products co lending gold is not reflected in our uh, gold loan box it's separately shown as co lending okay okay so but by uh, i mean uh, our own sourcing of gold loan why is it not growing i mean uh, considering we have uh, we have put some of the capacity for uh, deposit in many of our branches because we want to make sure that our deposit momentum retail deposit momentum is uh, so that kind of balance we have done to make sure that without giving them additional capacity make sure that they focus on gold so we change the scorecard uh, here and there to make sure that uh, the deposit momentum is uh, strong right understood and last question sir and also you see the fee momentum because some of the branches are performing quite well on uh, uh, core fee income which you would have noticed in our uh, presentation yes yes noted sir and and last question sir on your opex to asset right so in the last 2 3 4 quarters that ratio is improving yeah. and uh, you know uh, we are steadily uh, making an improvement there uh, towards our goal of 2.4 2.5 Uh, there is no um, i mean that that trajectory should be maintained right i mean is the fair way to look at it i mean uh, there is no uh, let's say uh, i mean this quarter the staff have increased but uh, ideally that trajectory should uh, sustain improvement that is the broader question yeah the way we have been looking at our projections for the next 3 uh, years uh, are making certain assumptions we will continue to invest in uh, front line as you know in quarter 1 all the uh, cost of uh, salary increase and all comes in whereas there is no balance sheet to support so usually our first quarter cost uh, would be higher without the corresponding balance sheet the growth at the time we may see uh, some in here and there uh, increase in uh, cost to average asset on a long term trend basis year on year we expect cost to average asset to come down while we are continuing to invest in uh, in uh, Uh, frontline uh, uh, increase of frontline uh, staff for us to continue to grow and our intention is to increase the uh, growth to about 20% right and sir if i may ask i have one uh, last question uh, so uh, a um, the status or the uh, any status update on the mbc appointment and secondly uh, there was an rbi notification which said that you know a bank has to have more than one full time director so uh, you know uh, your your timeline on the uh, appointment of another whole time director also thank you uh, whatever rbi guidelines we will comply with it uh, so we have to engage with uh, nrc and board to uh, make that happen uh, so i think the guideline has just come about 4 5 days ago or few days ago 
so we are on top of it as far as the mdco uh, uh, you know appointment is concerned the application has already been put into rbi uh, and uh, we will wait for rbi to revert to us thank you sir thank you and uh, all the very best yeah thank you thank you the next question is from the line of mona ketan from dollar capital please go ahead yeah hi sir good evening uh, so firstly um, you mentioned in your opening uh, in you know one of the comments about uh, the mortgage uh, book first coming at a fixed rate and then repricing at high levels so could you just explain uh, what exactly happens in this product and is the entire portfolio in the same format um i did not catch your question uh, what is same format uh so on the mortgage portfolio you mentioned that you first give these loans at a fixed rate the no, mortgage no. loan the small and then ticket loan, yeah. yeah small ticket loan see we incur legal cost we incur valuation cost uh, some of the small ticket customers at least for a small period of time prefer a fixed emi and these small ticket customers our yield is higher than our average yield that you see in our uh, uh, portfolio depending upon their credit risk uh, profile because we have certain bands depending upon the type of product and uh, location etc we have a pricing uh, grid which we administer on that so um, when you originate this loan they come up for they are all uh, fixed for a small period of time and then they come for repricing so we see that whatever loans we have booked in the last uh, year or so all that is now coming up for uh, repricing month on month and that starts to build up further next year because our new originations have also started improving since the last uh, many months so all that all starts to come for repricing in the calendar year uh, of uh, next year itself that is what i mentioned sure so uh, the big in the small ticket loan for the slightly bigger ticket loan and all it is fully variable right from day one you got it so this fixed rate is typically for a year and then it moves to the um so the customer preference it can be six months it can be one year it depends on the customer's uh, preference you know got it and uh, if i have to understand of your mortgage book how much of this is this kind of uh how much of the portfolio because our mortgage book is very old now it's 18000 crores we have been doing mortgage for i don't have that uh, number readily all we monitor is how much is coming up for repricing and what is the impact of that on basis points on a, so in our projection we keep adding those uh, uh, you know changes so uh, in the next 6 months for example how much could be coming up for re- repricing of the mortgage book i don't have that but i think uh, it keeps building up Uh, because we started booking uh, uh, more loans if you see in the last uh, 12 months right so it starts to build up much more by january march of uh, next year okay got it and uh, secondly on the um, on the restructured book so um, i understand some of the flow through is happening over the last two quarters so uh, two things here one you expect this to continue and secondly when uh, these loans come become an nta uh, is the interest reversal typically more than 3 months uh, because they were restructured and were not paying or is it typically the similar 3 months format usually it is only 3 months but when we upgrade some of these uh, loans uh, so it could be more than 3 uh, months because uh, two things happen if a customer goes into npa and we have to let's say initiate all the legal process and all the legal process and everything takes about anywhere from 3 to 6 months to kind of uh, uh, fructify maybe even 7 months to fructify but in the meantime if you are able to negotiate with the customer and get him to upgrade his account settle etc then you actually gain a few more months i mean all the months interest that he has not uh, paid hmm sure got it and just finally um on your roa uh, you know what would be the guidance and what could be the drivers here on from the uh, for the roa i think uh, uh, two three drivers are there but not in any particular uh, uh, order uh, we are slightly uh, 
we are slightly, I would say, delayed on that because of the sudden cost of fund increase that we had to grapple with uh, in the last uh, three months. But uh, we see that uh, situation stabilizing in about uh, two quarters or so. Uh, first of all, the growth would help us to uh, uh, improve the uh, uh, what's it called cost to average assets, for example, would improve and we get uh, the balance sheet. In line with balance sheet, our fee income also is expected to uh, grow. Uh, that is one. Secondly, although it is difficult to grow CASA, what we have done is we have kind of put a lot of uh, shifted some of the capacity, like I mentioned to Jay Mudra, to CASA and term deposits because we want to make sure that uh, we don't allow the cost of funds to get too much out of control despite the market uh, uh, conditions. We don't believe that uh, our credit cost should go out of uh, whack. I used to give a guidance of uh, 45, 50 basis points. But from the current portfolio, it looks like it can even be like 35, 38 basis point. That is how it looks from whatever reading that we have of our uh, uh, portfolio. And uh, lastly, we are also changing some of the uh, product mix. And this is important for us to know, is that prior to COVID, we used to do a lot more business loan. And uh, uh, our proportion of home loan was uh, like maybe 20, 25%. Uh, percent. During COVID, we shifted our focus to uh, home loans. Again, the same segment. Segment remains the same as uh, uh, self-employed. And uh, slowly now we are shifting it back because now we are pretty confident of the current uh, market situation, our own portfolio. We are shifting this, uh, this direction to more business loan. That also should help us to uh, give us a few basis points on the name. These are the actions that we are taking to get to uh, ROA of 1% and uh, 14%. Sure, sure. Thank you and all the best. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Bisse from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just on the restructured portfolio, uh, uh, as you said that none of the uh, current uh, restructured accounts are under moratorium now. Uh, so, uh, how does one expect the upgrade trajectory here? Uh, if you look at uh, our slippages, uh, more slippages are coming out from the restructured and much less from the overall non restructured yeah. book. Yeah. However, from a re uh, upgrade and re uh, recoveries, there is no challenge in any of the uh, slippages. So recent slippages, which has happened because of customers coming out of moratorium in, uh, say, for example, early calendar year this year and maybe April, June, etc. Whosoever has slipped out of it will take about six months at least to mature into a either a settlement or an upgrade or a uh, you know recovery uh, uh, action. So we expect and we have demonstrated again, if you see our uh, absolute recovery and upgrade this quarter, I think it is about 295 crores. And if you look at March quarter, we probably were at about 300 some uh, uh, crores. I think it is on page uh, 25, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, page 25. So again, 306 crores, we are at 289 uh, uh, crores. So we have demonstrated ability to do upgrade and uh, recovery on this pool. So I expect this number to continue to improve. And of the balance? And we don't use any collection agency and all, all our collections are in-house. Even a lot of lawyers we have in-house. So uh, we feel that uh, we have pretty decent uh, uh, you know, handle on this. And of the balance pool of restructured loans, uh, how much would be mortgages? I think uh, much of the uh, pool is either home loan or uh, lap and a very small part will be uh, 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 commercial vehicle. Other than that, we don't have anything. No. So that's the other thing. We never restructured any uh, unsecured loan and all. Uh, we probably would have restructured maybe uh, five loans. We never restructured BC loans. Uh, the only loan that we restructured was customers who have good track record with us and, uh, you know, who are having temporary difficulties which was mostly in mortgages, home loan, and commercial vehicles. So 80-20 uh, split across mortgage and CV would be a... Uh, no, no, no. CV will be much less than that. Much, much less than that. Okay. Our CV portfolio itself is very small, as you can see. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you and all the best. That's all from my side.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Jani from Prabhudas Leelagar. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so, first question is uh, probably I missed the comment. Uh, uh, the fee income looks a bit, uh, you know, bumped up this quarter. Is it because of PSLC and, you know, should you quantify this? PSLC, where is it today? Two years ago, we earned 80 crore of uh, PSLC. Right. right? Last year, I think PSLC was some 20 odd crores. Right? This year, I think PSLC will be maybe 3 4 crores. We have taken a hit of 80 crore on our uh, chest on the uh, PSLC. Uh, PSLC which look like every year it will improve for whatever, uh, I mean that's a separate decision for whatever reason and we have been continuing to generate good quality PSL and all but the demand supplying has been a, a challenge on this particular uh, uh, this thing. So uh, it's not PSLC income, it's a lot of work done on uh, third party C income. Uh, if you recall we have told you in the past, maybe a few quarters ago, that we have a separate team which is training the front line in all the branches, giving them uh, training, uh, the analytics team, giving them support on uh, the kind of customers they should contact. All that is happening and we hope to continue to build the momentum on this. So, I also appreciate this. Is just, uh, you know, you want to clarify that there are no one-offs out there, right? I mean, so, you know, could, could we assume a 1995 sort of a run rate to be the normal? There is no one-off uh, on this uh, at all, and we hope to grow fee income in line with our balance sheet growth year on year. Understood. Understood. Uh, so, secondly, coming to the funding profile, right? Uh, if you could just quantify the LCR, uh, the reason I'm asking is this is because you know over the last uh, uh, one one and a half year we increased our share of wholesale deposits. So, you know, a sub question to that is. What would be the, the you know, funding cost difference? So, from where are you getting the information that we have increased the sale of the uh, wholesale deposits? So, the interbank deposits have gone up by from 9% to 13.3. So, that is the number I yeah. So, we have the following type of, first of all, top 20 deposits you see is, has been below 7%. This, this quarter has just slightly increased to 7.06 uh, uh, or something like that. Right, that is number one. We have number of customers in the uh, cooperative bank category, small small corporate bank category, who give us non-callable uh, deposits. Okay, and that is a that has been our core customer for probably ten odd years. At the same time, you see, we have continued to grow our retail uh, term deposits uh, as well. So, from a profile of liquidity. And LPR, I think we are in uh, pretty uh, uh, good shape, uh, except that market has not been very easy for us to grow our uh, CASA balances and we are putting that uh, effort by shifting some capacity, in, more capacity into CASA. So, uh, so just a sub-question to that, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, funding cost, right, uh, the interbank deposits and uh, retail term deposits, the cost of funds, funding would be similar? For what, uh, for what and what? For retail term deposits and uh, interbank deposits? No, there are bulk deposits and retail deposits. That's the way the uh, interest rate works. So, you know, and those are all items published in uh, our uh, website and you can have a look at that. Uh, we probably are one of the banks which publishes all the uh, rates including bulk and everything uh, in, a, in a very transparent uh, manner. And I am looking at the deposit rates across uh, the thing. Of course, each bank has to choose which is the bucket in which they want to uh, have a, you know, uh, what's it called, uh, their peak rates, uh, you know, which is their sweet spot. So we keep choosing that depending upon our asset profile. Understood, sir. Understood. Uh, that is it from my end. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prabal from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yes. Am I audible? Uh, maybe slightly louder if possible. Go ahead. Is this better, sir? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. So my first question is on the PCR provision coverage ratio. Uh, so that has come down from 68% in March to 64% now. 
so how are you thinking about uh, this this ratio because our next slippages continue to be greater than 1% uh, our intention is to take it up to uh, uh, 70% okay over time uh, but when i look at uh, different categories of uh, loans okay uh, where we see the recovery is taking time first of all okay let me just backtrack let us say RBI has certain IRAC norms on what kind of provision has to be done on secured, unsecured, etc. Our provision is ahead of that RBI norm uh, and it has been like that for many, many years. So, if they say X percent is to be provided in a, uh, uh, in a particular time, our provision would be higher than that. So, our provision is always higher than what is required by RBI guidelines. I am very confident about that. That is point number one. Point number two, we also have something called uh, uh, specific provision for certain assets. So, wherever we see in terms of some large ticket, especially let's say corporate and and all, we see that the recovery efforts are taking time. We have an overlay of provision on that to make sure that uh, we appropriately kind of, uh, uh, you know, represent our risk on that to our board and our uh, audit committee. So, as an example, corporate bank will have far higher uh, coverage ratio for the NPA that is there of 228 crores. Whereas in mortgages, we don't believe that we are going to lose uh, money on mortgages or home loans. So, even if our coverage is, say, for example, 35 or 40 percent, we feel that it is uh, far higher. It doesn't mean that we will stop making provision of that, that aging provision will continue to happen with that. So, let's say. Uh Till the time next slippages normalize and uh, parallelly if we try to raise our coverage to 70%, there, there could be a possibility that credit cost might overshoot 50-60 basis point guidance that we typically use to. I never given 50-60 basis point guideline, I don't know from where you are getting. Just now I gave a guideline that we think that it probably will be 35, 30, 40 basis points. So I don't think... Uh, Pre-COVID and post-COVID, my guidelines have been in the range of 40, 45 basis points only. Uh, so, I don't think we have any 50, 60 basis points. Uh, even pre-COVID, barring maybe some aberration in commercial vehicle and all, I don't think we've had any uh, uh, issues uh, on that. Uh, that is point one. Point two is, please also look at page number 29. Okay? So, for restructured advances, we have a separate, uh, uh, you know, provision of uh, about 194 crores. There is another contingency provision of another 43 crores, right? So that 43 crores, for example, is not counted in uh, net NPA. It's a contingency provision that is there. Uh, while floating provision is counted in... So I think our provision college obviously can be better, but I think we are very uh, strongly provided at this point in time. Well, uh, can I second question? Why it may not, uh, why it may not uh, exceed us? Because our... Recovery is an upgrade also, we expect it to improve. If you don't recover an upgrade, then obviously the credit cost will go up. Understood. So my second question is uh, that uh, our agree and inclusive banking team seems to be growing at a faster clip, 30, 31%. Wide so is this going to be the focus area going, going forward as well? Agree inclusive banking has been a focus area for us. Uh, if you look at our strategy document and uh, what we have been mentioning, Retail, SME, MSME and agri inclusive banking has been our focus area for past many years. Corporate has not been something that we wanted to grow, but we keep it only for, uh, you know, liquidity uh, uh, reasons. And there are multiple products in uh, agri inclusive banking like ACC, tractors, mortgages, uh, MFI and so on. We have separate teams working on each of this. And uh, given that we have almost 190 odd branches uh, in uh, AIB, uh, we believe that uh, we should do very well in uh, AIB. And the, and the yields on the AIB portfolio, is it better compared to let's say overall yields of 11.5? Product to uh, uh, product. Uh, it's a, in certain cases, the yields are also higher and they even uh, credit costs should be higher. Understood. Sir, you, uh, you mentioned that to improve our yields, uh, we might start focusing more on business loans. So is this the lab loan against property that you were speaking of? Yeah, so we started this journey uh, with the loan against the property, which we used to call as business loan, many, many years ago. 
uh, we used to be at uh, almost 85% of our uh, business used to be in, uh, in uh, lab and 15%. Uh, towards the uh, end of uh, uh, 2019 and early 2020, given the market conditions, we changed uh, some uh, mix. And uh, what we are seeing is now that we have uh, much more, uh, what are they called, data points and the thing post-COVID. Uh, we want to kind of uh, focus a little bit more on BL, which will add a few more basic points to our uh, uh, yield and mix. That's our intention. And uh, we know this business backwards, so uh, shifting some of the capacities or adding some of the capacities into business loan is not something that, uh, you know, we would have difficulty in doing. Okay. So, like, so within mortgages, the share of lab could increase compared to home loans because now we are more comfortable on the business loan. Yeah, uh, in a step-by-step -step manner, like over a period of next one year or so, we, we will uh, keep increasing the share of it uh, so that uh, we get better uh, yield. Nothing wrong with uh, home loan, and it also comes at a lower uh, uh, risk weight, but uh, we would, uh, now that we have a stronger understanding of post-COVID uh, issues and also, we are kind of shifting some focus to do lower against property. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Agarwala from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so I have a question about the quarterly repayment rate. So if I do a back of the calculations, uh, your uh, quarterly you know, repayment rates have been coming down uh, despite the fact that a lot of loans have come out of the moratorium. Uh, what can be the reason around this? What is quarterly repayment rate? So if I you give the disbursement number and you give the loan number. So if I just do a reverse calculation to see what is the quarterly repayments. So uh, it used to be say 10-11% every quarter. And right now that number has come down to 7.5%. No, if, uh, okay. If we are in, uh, first of all, I'm not sure what that number indicates or something because we have a full handle on the repayment of each and every uh, the thing. Uh, uh, and you can see our collection efficiency has been uh, pretty good. So I don't think we have any quarterly repayment issue. But uh, let me put it this way. If you have a, if you are building a portfolio of installment loans, which is what most of our loans are in mortgages, which is what it is, what happens then is when the new loan proportion keeps increasing, you should expect smaller repayment in the, uh, you know, early stage for some of those loans because that is how it would be. So I don't see any uh, major issue with our uh, quarterly repayment and we are confident that the kind of capacities and the dispersal targets that we are pursuing, we should be able to, uh, you know, pursue 20% uh, kind of uh, growth rate. So, so my, uh, I got to uh, the point, uh, the, the point I was trying to understand is that it's, uh, as a strategy, are we, you know, uh, renegotiating the rate in order to stop uh, balance transfers? There is a separate team. Hold on. There is a separate team, uh, and I haven't seen any major problems in our uh, monthly pre-closures. The pre-closures are in similar range as it was in last quarter or previous quarter. Usually, pre-closure rates increase in a declining rate environment. Uh, we have not seen uh, pre closure uh, out of our ordinary kind of uh, whatever uh, modeling that we have done. So we don't have any concern on that. But having said that, the mortgage team has a separate team which discusses with the uh, uh, customer and it has to be done without uh, causing any, uh, you know, causing any pain to the customer because, uh, it, you know, we don't want them to complain to ombudsman and think that we are trying to hold back their loan and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, they are very trained kind of frontline people who try to understand what is the reason that they are going and we have some model by which they decide what kind of price break that has to be given to the customer for retaining the customer. That activity has been going on for quite some time and there's a separate team that works on it. In our call center and I don't know probably where else they have, you know, the call center, oh. yeah, call center, yeah. Okay, so uh, there was one more related to this. Uh, uh, as we, you know, pass the rates, uh, you know, ends, uh, are we uh, increasing uh, just the tenure uh, significantly or how uh, it is working? 
up to a point it's always a tenure increase in uh, some rare outliers and all we may increase the uh, you know increase the installment but uh, generally in mortgage business since i have been part of for the last several several years you just simply increase the tenure and as the interest rate comes down you you know the uh, the tenure comes down simple got it and uh, finally sir uh, your thoughts on uh, cv and uh, uh, microfinance uh, so uh, when do we expect uh, cv business to start growing again and and there has been some you know microfinance uh, microfinance we have uh, signed up couple of more uh, bc uh, partners and um, uh, unfortunately some of our bc partners got acquired by uh, uh, some banks and so on so therefore we suddenly were uh, without some uh, bc partner but we have kind of rebuilt that uh, bc uh, partner and we are looking for more high quality bc uh, you know business uh, associates so that is all in progress so i think in the coming months we should do better than how we have done in the last uh, few months on uh, this thing and as far as cv is concerned we feel that we'll continue to just do cross sell to our existing customers on uh, uh, cv Uh, and concentrate more on business loan and home loan uh, which we seem to be having a pretty uh, decent uh, understanding and handle uh, and we expect that to contribute uh, almost 60% in the coming years okay sir thanks for answering my question and all the best thanks thank you next question is from the line of mb mahesh from kotak securities please go ahead we i just one clarification on this slide 35 other income line um you can see one line of line of, line item of the fee income line which is gone up on the commission exchange but there is a corresponding drop in others page 35 yeah this is that uh, non the, the break up of the non interest income you can see commission exchange and brokerages have gone up so it is 96 97 or 77 correct but uh, the overall non interest income is unchanged uh, just hold on a second yeah okay yeah. yeah. just hold on a second okay we have to come back to you on that there is some uh, 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 reclass but nothing uh, you, you are looking at this uh, 75 versus 97 you are saying no correct the total non interest income is 107 but commission has done exceptionally well but others has not done so just trying to explain what explain that other income okay uh, mahesh i'll come back to you i think it has got to do with the uh, changes in the uh, irda regulation right ird okay yeah in terms of how yeah, they, usually that line item will have recovery from return off so we don't give your uh, return off recovery have been very minuscule for us uh, uh, i don't think this quarter they've had any major recovery on that i don't think that is the item but i think some ird regulation change is what is reflecting some part of it here okay because that, that explains a big drop in the And then the QOQ change that that seems to be only in line item which is of an aberration here in this quarter. Yeah, so that is basically something to do with the uh, uh, IRDA regulation. I don't think uh, there is anything else on that. The actual amount of uh, business that we are doing on uh, third party also has uh, uh, gathered steam, and we are hoping that we will build further momentum on this because we are really putting in a lot of effort from the uh, corporate office to train and. Uh, get everyone to focus on the uh, products that we are distributing for two or three of these uh, companies okay perfect perfect sir this is useful thanks thank you the next question is from the line of darshil from crown capital please go yeah. ahead okay um, hello am i audible yes please hello am i audible sir 
Yeah, yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so just uh, I think most of my questions have been answered. Uh, just wanted to know that our outlook that we mentioned in the presentation of ROI one uh, percent that we would uh, target to do it by what time period? Okay, so what we know from whatever we have been able to achieve post COVID is eighty five ninety basis point and eleven and a half to eleven point seven five percent. Is consistently possible in that. Now, unfortunately, last quarter and the, you know this, when this year has started, we have had some uh, cost of fund uh, increase, and some of it is still to be passed on to the customer based on the pro portfolio profile, which I explained. Right. So that all should hopefully in the next couple of quarters we should be able to do that. The way we are thinking about it is that uh, keep growing at at least 20 percent. Uh, per annum, and we know that the kind of capacity that we have built, we should be able to achieve that perhaps more, but at least 20% is something in the core product that we are concentrating on without uh, messing around with any of the liquidity profile and so on. The other focus is I know difficult times on CASA, but we are thinking that you know this is a time when we have to put more effort on uh, CASA to help um, you know not let the cost of fund go out of uh, control. So that is second point. Third is we believe that our credit cost uh, is actually improving from whatever previous projection that we have said based on our understanding of the portfolio. Uh, and we think that recovery is upgrade should continue to pick up uh, pace. So all in all, most of the parameters and cost to average assets also is steadily come down. All in all, all the parameters are moving in the right direction. And we want to target at least in the next two, three to four quarters of consistently delivering 1% and 14% and uh, you know this is a plan that we have and I also mentioned to you about some of the product mix change that we are uh, hoping to uh, do which is already started. Uh, okay sir and just sorry sir clarification for 20% growth you mean in our uh, loan uh, loan season right sir? Uh, we believe the capacity that we have created, we should be able to achieve it. Our intention is to double it in uh, three to three and a half years, and we seem to be on track so far. Uh, oh, perfect, perfect. Sir. Thank you so much. All the best. Sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rakesh Kumar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. So just uh, one question uh, with respect to the provisions that we are holding on the NPA and non-NPA book. Uh, that number as a proportion has been coming down. So just to understand that, is it that, you know, uh, like, you know, sort of comfort that we are deriving from the nature of the characteristics of the loans, or there is any other reason that we are, you know, uh, the main reason is when an NPA moves from researcher to, oh, sorry, when an account moves from researcher to NPA, the provision also moves uh, with that. And we have recovery in upgrades, we don't need to keep that uh, provision. We have to make provision only for the newer uh, NPA, right? Uh, from a coverage point of view, I also mentioned that uh, over time we want to take it up to 70%. Uh, uh, and in that, at the moment, even that 43 crores that we have separate as a contingency provision is not uh, considered. So, and I also mentioned to you that from a provision point of view, we are, our provision policy is ahead of uh, the minimum IRAC norms that prescribed by uh, RBI. So, from a provision point of view, I don't have uh, any concern on, uh, on our portfolio. That's true, sir. But just for the modeling perspective, you know, just to, uh, you know, see that what provision that we hold at the end of, say, 24 or 25. So this provision as a, like, for non-NPA provision for the performing advances, which is 140 bips now. So where should we, where should this number go to? I can't uh, predict that for you. These are all the provisions that created, if you remember, during COVID time, right? And uh, during those times, the whole focus was on strengthening your provision uh, because it was not very easy to predict how things are going to be uh, moving. Uh, now we have a lot more, uh, I know there are still uncertainties and all, but COVID type of uh, big challenges uh, is not there. So therefore, these provisions uh, will continue to come down, and but we'll continue to make provision on the 
uh, NPA portfolio or any other portfolio which we think could be uh, in stress. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ranul Babu. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sai Kiran Pulavati, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, hey, just hi. one question. Hi, sir. How are you? Very good. Sir, am I audible? Sure. Yeah, you are. Yeah. So just one question from my side. I think you will be completing 15 years pretty soon. If you have to look back in the journey, uh, how do you, uh, what I can say, evaluate what has gone right, what has gone wrong, or probably where you are leaving this bank, how do you look at this in terms of the platform for someone to come and take it over? Just your thoughts, that will be really helpful. Sir. Thank you. Why don't you call me separately when we discuss? Because I'm not sure this is a forum where we can. And uh, if I share my personal views, and I don't believe that uh, that will be appropriate for this. Uh, it's nothing personal, sir, but uh, just as an CEO of the bank, because uh, you would have certain thoughts and everything, right? So, so just thought of checking up better if you're comfortable. That's it. No, I'm comfortable, but on a one on one basis as opposed to in a group. Got it, sir. And, and one, one more question, sir. If I have to see, uh, since the last two years, you had significantly added capacity in terms of the number of employees and then branches. Uh, how do you evaluate the productivity of uh, these, uh, what I think, the employees, and how uh, whether some more uh, productivity is expected going forward, sir? Uh, Praveen, would you like to answer it? Praveen uh, is a person who has a lot of capacity, so you know he's a best person to answer this. Hi, Sai. Good to hear from you. Uh, so, uh, let me tell you what, what we're doing is uh, two, three uh, uh, things. If at a very broad level, there is the feet on street led, uh, led productivity increase that we're doing. At a, at a partnership level, uh, we are increasing the footprint which allows us to, to get the uh, desired assets at the rate required through affiliates and, uh, and partnerships, both on the uh, deposit front as well as on the loans front. And the third leg, uh, slow but emerging, is the digital uh, do-it-yourself leg. So three levels of, to which we are adding on to our uh, uh, top line and, and also the income. On the feet of street, we, uh, we have a mentorship program uh, where we ensure that early success is got by our, uh, our employees because that's a very, very good indicator uh, so which, which will arrest uh, attrition. The, the single biggest problem that we have at New Hire, Sweden Street, etc., they are extremely mobile and they get job at a drop of a hat and they keep hopping around uh, all the time. So the, the best way to arrest that is, is uh, to, to ensure that they become successful early in, 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 their, uh, in their career. Otherwise, it becomes a revolving door. Are we successful at it? Uh, we can be we can be better at that, but uh, we are much better than what we were before. So there is progress happening on the front. Uh, uh, we are while on the productivity front, we are also seeing improvement in terms of partnership. I'll give you two examples very quickly. One is on co-lending, which we do on the asset side, uh, and the other is uh, where we do uh, you know partnerships with let's say Neo, for example. It's a it's it, uh, uh, basically a use your card abroad proposition uh, with, through which we, through this partnership, which we get underlying savings account. So, so that's how we are looking at productivity uh, clearly. Uh, to sum it up, feed on street improvement, uh, more partnerships, more uh, judicious partnerships, and the DIY digital product. Thanks, Professor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, most of my questions have been answered. So just one data keeping question on the uh, provisions breakup for the current quarter, if you could just help with that. Yeah, the provision breakup, uh, right? Yeah, hold on a second. Uh, I, um, Chintan, uh, the provision breakdown is, uh, the NPA provision is about 25 crores. Uh, the standard provision is seven. 
Uh, we have floating of four crores, and the other is about 3.7. So that total up to about 39.7 crores for the quarter. Ah, uh, sure, sure. And uh, so just one uh, on the uh, OPEC thing. So sir, uh, we have been uh, saying that on uh, the brand set, uh, we have significantly added our uh, maintain or uh, build the capacity, and now it is time for expansion. Uh, so going ahead, uh, any ballpark number on what kind of uh, expansion uh, we would be seeing in the so kind of the branch uh, expansion in the branch and uh, headcount would be relatively quite slower as compared to the loan growth. Yeah, is that a fair as uh, uh, assumption to make? So, uh, I mean, I've said this even in, in the past. For the market opportunity that we see and for the kind of understanding that we have of this segment and also the fact that we have so many years of experience on this, if we had more headroom in our uh, costing and ratio, we would add a lot more people because that is the kind of expansion we have. But we have to pace it out because, you know, on a near-term basis also you can't, uh, you, you can't sacrifice too much of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sacrifice too much of operating profit and so on. So, this opportunity is there to add a lot of uh, frontline employees. And like Praveen mentioned, because of attrition, we also have to be, you know, uh, make sure that we don't lose capacity and keep adding uh, resources. So, I don't think we are going to slow down adding uh, our uh, number of employees on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, of course, uh, as we have crossed, lay, for example, 10,000, if we add 1,000, that will look like a 10%, but if you add 6,000, if you add 10,000, that will be 1,000, it will be like a 16,000. So from a percentage point of view, it will keep coming down, but we'll keep steadily adding frontline in order for us to continue this uh, growth momentum. However, cost to average assets, we expect step by step to come down because of growth and productivity. Uh, sure, sir. And sir, just one. In terms of branches, I don't think we will add more than uh, 25, 30 branches per year. I think we are quite happy with that, uh, uh, with that uh, addition. Uh, yeah, uh, sure, sir. Uh, thank you for that. And sir, just one last thing, uh, last thing on the margins part again. Uh, so, sir, as we have, uh, as we told, that uh, most of the uh, star which comes is in the lower pricing band, and the uh, rates which we have increased, despite that, there won't be much rise in the star cost. So, if you could just share the number of blended uh, cost of star, if possible, if you could just share that number for this quarter and the past uh, previous quarter as well, if you could help with that. Which number are you talking about? I'm not getting it. Savings account. Uh, so overall cost of saving account, blended cost of saving account. Uh, we don't present that uh, number. We are giving you the cost of deposit, which also includes. But the reason why we pursue uh, savings account, so uh, although success has been a little low because of the market condition, is because it is much more uh, beneficial for us to pursue savings account than term deposit, despite the, uh, despite the various uh, bands of cost because most of it comes from the uh, lower band of uh, uh, deposit, I mean lower band of, uh, you know, average balance. Uh, sure, sir. And so just one last thing for your uh, follow-up on this. So, uh, if you could just help with any broad margin guidance on this, and so where should we expect the margins to settle and any trajectory? Our business model is at 365 to 375 basis point. Uh, but there are near-term challenges, which I mentioned at the start. And then there is a balance of portfolio that needs to get repriced over a period of time uh, in the uh, in the contracted uh, time frame, which is uh, you know starting to build up, which will help uh, you know help uh, improve the margin. Uh, but some of it will get taken over by cost of fund. What we believe is that over the next quarters we still have to deal with this cost of fund, which is coming through repricing, uh, you know renewals and so on. But for which uh, volume growth should give us the full benefit of uh, interest income growth is what uh, our uh, thought process is. Uh, sure, sir, sure. This is very helpful. Uh, thank you for answering all my questions. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Thank you very much for dialing in. Uh, look forward to talking to you next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much.
on behalf of BCB Bank Limited, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.